What I love about architectural technology in the profession is the broad church that it is and that um, you can have an engaging conversation with someone who's been doing it for 50 years as much as you can someone who's really new to it and you get that engagement. It's, it's, it's a really open, friendly profession. I sort of fell into architectural technology. I did start off doing an architecture degree, worked for a practice for a number of years, um, then somehow ended up in social housing, uh, came to work at the university on the social housing courses, and then ended up uh, inheriting the architectural technology course because I had an architectural background. But it worked really well because the social housing elements, the kind of uh, social justice bits, really do feed nicely into the architectural technology program. It's not just about designing a building, making sure that it works and it functions, but also that it works and functions the people in it. I was told by a school teacher, that headmaster, that I wasn't very academic. So GCSEs were a surprise, then A-levels were a surprise. So I went into the degree rather naively. I did have, since the age of 11, a bit of a background in the construction industry and thought that this is just a natural next step. Similarly, when I'm going into practice, um, that was again the next natural step and something that was quite comfortable. Uh, and I did have a great time with that. It was something that was very accessible, actually. And I think it helped going to a university like John Moore's, which has a good reputation for widening participation made it that much easier. I did have a strange experience where someone did write a sort of ransom note to out me to my boss, uh, but I handed this letter to my boss and I'm really glad I did because all that panic and worry went because he was fine with it. He gave me the confidence to realise that actually you can be open and honest about yourself in a workplace and I've never had an issue past that in the construction industry, in the housing sector or in academia. I think my students are starting in a profession now that's uh, more inclusive and different, I guess, than it was perhaps in the mid-90s. We grew up in an environment where it wasn't that easy to be open about your sexuality. I'm hoping that people of the current generation moving into the profession might feel a little bit more uh, relaxed about that. We are now getting a younger generation of students coming to us, people who are actively picking AT, and they're a lot happier and uh, open about who they are uh, learning differences, sexuality, gender politics, all this kind of stuff fits in rather nicely into the class discussions and we're able to accommodate that with the 20 year career bricklayer as well as the 18 year old who's maybe coming in and very open about their, their identity. So it's amazing the conversations we can have and AT offers a very nice framework for that because we talk about the practicalities and then the realities. We were made aware as a regional committee of the Building Equality Network and what it's done is really introduce and expose members of the committee, I guess, and then the region wider to a plethora of professionals who are interested as allies or as members of the LGBTQA plus uh, community to the realities of working in the industry and to being able to show how being aware of people's life and experiences can make us better professionals. We need to be able to listen to clients and students, for example, in my case, to understand how to give them the best experience and being better at understanding clients when we present differently to the way that you're used to or perceived norm is a really good project. Be open to engagement with different people, not just within architectural technology, but also from with the wider construction industry and do that and it'll be absolutely worth your time and effort. What I've found is just let let it sort of you know slide in and slip in easily and become something that gets to be part of the conversation uh, slowly. Take your time with these things. But I'm hoping, like I say, that maybe that's not such a big problem now. And I've never encountered so many problems or issues in any of those situations where it's become problematic for anyone other than the person that wrote the stupid note. So beyond that, I'm hoping that uh, the profession is as open now as it really was when I got into it.